Praise the Lord. Welcome all of us to our today's series uh, where we are going to discuss about worship. And before we go to the details, I want to pray and also introduce myself in Jesus' mighty name. Everlasting Father, I thank you. I worship you for who you are. Thank you for your name. We thank you for your power and your name and even your plan and the purposes you have for us in our lives. We are very gracious. Today we are going to interact with your word. Help us by the flowering of your Holy Spirit without measure. Teach us and train us and align us to your will. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I pray, believing and trust in Jesus' name. My name is Pastor Stephen from Bindio. I'm from Deliverance Church International Kayole. Uh, today we have a very powerful message where we want to interact with the Word of God. And uh, the topic of the Word today is worship as a divine weapon. Worship as a divine weapon. Worshiping God, we can do it in three major ways. We can see that is singing. We can even worship by words. And even we can worship by sacrifices. One of the important words in a Christian life, it is worship. So worship is offering to God. Uh, in worship, uh, we worship God for his person, the greatness of his work, and we worship God because he has demanded us we worship. We worship God so that we can have joy in our lives. From that summary, uh, I want to connect with the word of God in Psalms 156. The Bible says, let, us, let everything that has breathed praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Also connect the same with John. And then we connect it with John. John 4, 23. The time is coming and has now come when the two worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in the truth. Now, this subject of worship, it is supposed to be done by all the creation, as we have read in Psalms 156. Every creation is supposed to worship God. But there are worships which God needs and which value than the others. That's why John has taught us uh, 423 that God is spirit and those who worship him, they should worship in the spirit and in the truth. They have all those who are born again, those who are Christian. They should learn that they are, they are candidate of worship, but it is to be in the truth and in the spirit. So today we want to discuss uh, the, 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 the worship as a weapon. We know we can worship a style, but today we want worship as a weapon. Uh, uh, I want to start by saying the reason why we worship. One, we are created by God so that we can honor him. That is according to Isaiah 43, number 7. We were saved to bring honor to God and enjoy him forever. That is Ephesians 1, 12. Uh, God our Father wants us to worship him. That is the, the third reason is we worship because God wants us to worship him. That is John 4, 23. In salvation, we are made like God. Therefore, we have to worship God because we are like him. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. Now, I want, now we look three or four examples in the Bible, which are acting as weapon, as the, the candidates who are doing it, we are worshiping. And I want to start with Paul and the silence. That is Acts 16. I want to start verse 25. About midnight, Paul and the sailors were praying and singing hymns to God. And uh, the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake, and the foundation of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors were open, and everyone chains were loosened. This is a scenario whereby Paul and the sailors were put in prison. And the Bible says, in the midnight, Instead of them complaining, they decided to see and to worship God. And the God divine power came down. The walls, uh, the, no, that is the foundation of the prison was shaken. The chains of the prisoners were shaken. And the doors were made loose. Meaning, a true worship can bring salvation, can bring deliverance, can bring even security, and also can bring liberty. In Jesus name. So worship can be a weapon. Another example is the issue of Jehoshaphat. That is 2 Chronicles 20, 21, 22. 
This is a time whereby Jospat was surrounded by enemy three kings which were powerful than him and they were planning to eliminate him. Then he consulted with God and God gave him a formula that is he is supposed not to fight this battle. This battle belonged to God. He decided to go to the battle with a choir. He, he organized men and women to sing and to worship God. Immediately he did that. The Bible says these men were confused and they raised to eliminate one another. And the just part was delivered from them because they destroyed themselves and even they left a plunder whereby he can take and they take them to, 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 to his kingdom. Another example is Solomon. The Solomon, 1 Kings 3, 4, 5. The Bible gives us a scenario where he went to give offering or he went to worship God by giving sacrifices. The Bible says he gave a thousand burning offerings. When he did that, God in heaven was touched and he decided to give him a promise. He asked him a question. What can I do for you? Meaning, worship from the heart can make you, can make a person to make the heaven open and they respond for, 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 for deliverance and for salvation. So for the example of the just Solomon was given the master key of riches and wealth because of worship. So he ended in the level of abundance. So in worship, when we go to God in prayer, we kneel down to him. But in worship, when we go to God in worship, it is our soul which is kneeling before God. And if our soul is kneeling before the God, it means no man can stand against you. All men and all the creation have to bow in your presence because you are candidates of worship in Jesus' name. Now, uh, another example on the same is that there was another lady called Michelle who was married by uh, King David. The Bible says, according to 1 Corinthians, Chronicles 21-29 when, when the Ark of the Covenant was being entered in the city and she looked how David was dancing and celebrating the Bible says she, she, she dishonored him in the heart and immediately God was touched in heaven, he came down and that woman was meant barren forever, even today meaning uh, the worship can bring a blessing to somebody and the worship can bring even a curse to somebody in Jesus mighty name so in summary, as worship as a weapon, worship can bring protection to us. Worship can bring salvation, deliverance, and security. Worship can bring blessings to us. And even it can curse our enemies. Uh, you can worship it when you are alone. And also you can worship with others, like the way we do in the church. In Jesus' mighty name. Therefore, as a candidate and as a child of God, you are not supposed to fight physically. You are supposed to fight in worship. And God will show himself mightily. So worship is a weapon. And we pray. The last thing, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for teaching us how to worship as a weapon. And how to worship so that we can invite you in our camp. And how we worship so that, dear Father, you can come in our situation and condition. Thank you for making us to be good worshippers. And I thank you for making us, dear Father, to enjoy worshiping you. Bless your people, the listeners, and bless the people who are in the house. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, we pray, believing in Jesus' name. God bless you mightily.